Welcome to this NPTEL lectures on robotics, basic and advanced concepts. In the last lecture, we had looked at how to obtain the linear and angular velocity of the links of a robot. And then I had shown you how to propagate the linear and angular velocity of the links of a robot from a fixed base all the way to the end effector. And finally, I had given an example of a planar three degree of freedom robot and showed you how to obtain the linear and angular velocity of each link. Okay, in this lecture, we will look at a very important concept in velocity kinematics of robots called the Jacobian matrix. And now this lecture, we'll look at the serial manipulator Jacobian matrix. Next, we'll look at the parallel manipulator Jacobian matrix. The serial manipulator Jacobian matrix to start, we first obtain the linear and angular velocity of the end effector of the robot. So, for example, in the planar 3R robot, which we had discussed last time, I showed you that the angular velocity of the tool coordinate system can be written in as sum of theta 1 dot, theta 2 dot, theta 3 dot, the z component, and the x and y components were zero. Likewise, the linear velocity of the end effector or the tool origin of the tool coordinate system could be written in terms of again theta 1 dot, theta 2 dot, theta 3 dot. And so, for example, the x component is minus L1 sine theta 1, theta 1 dot, minus L2 sine theta 1 plus theta 2 into theta 1 dot plus theta 2 dot, minus L3 sine theta 1, 2, 3, sum of theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 into theta 1 dot plus theta 2 dot plus theta 3 dot. Okay, so this was obtained and similarly the y component contains cosine of theta 1, theta 1 plus 2 and theta 1, 2 and 3 and the z component was 0. So this was obtained from the velocity propagation formula. The second set of quantities for the linear velocity of the tool could also be obtained from simple de derivative of the position vector. Now we can write these two expressions of angular velocity and linear velocity in a compact form. So the first we write the linear velocity components, okay, minus L1 S1 minus L2 S1 2 minus L3 S1 2 3 into theta 1 dot Okay, then the second term is minus L2 S12 minus L3 S123 into theta2 dot and minus L3 S123 into theta3 dot. Okay, so basically we take all the terms containing theta1 dot, all the terms containing theta2 dot and all the terms containing theta3 dot and write it as a matrix form. Okay, so the second row of this matrix can be written as L1 C1 plus L2 C1 2 plus L3 C1 2 3 into theta 1 dot, L2 C1 2 plus L3 C1 2 3 plus L3 C1 2 3 into theta 3 dot. And the z component is 0. Likewise, from the angular velocity, okay, we can write that the x component of the angular velocity is 0 the y component is 0 and the z component is theta 1 dot plus theta 2 dot plus theta 3 dot. So these two six scalar equations from these two vector equations can be written in this matrix form. So the column vector here is theta 1 dot theta 2 dot theta 3 dot multiplied by something which is a function of the link lengths L1, L2, L3 and sine and cosine of theta 1, 2 and 3. And the left side here contains the velocity vector, linear velocity vector and the angular velocity vector. So this left hand side quantity is a 6 by 1 entity. The top 3 by 1 part is the linear velocity of the tool and the bottom 3 by 1 is the angular velocity of the tool. Okay, so a few observations. This 0v tool is not actually a 6 by 1 vector. 
because the units are different. This is like meters per second and this is like radians per second. So we will use this dashed lines to separate the linear and angular velocity and to remind that this zero V tool or this combination of linear and angular velocity is not a vector in the strict sense of the word. The matrix in the square bracket is called the Jacobian matrix for the planar 3R manipulator. Okay, so that this is the introduction to the Jacobian matrix. So what does this Jacobian matrix do? It relates the linear and angular velocity of the tool with the joint velocities. So joint velocities are theta1 dot, theta2 dot, theta3 dot. The left hand side is the linear velocity of the tool and the angular velocity of the tool. Okay. The other important thing in this Jacobian matrix is it is the Jacobian matrix for the end effector or the tool. So that's why we have a leading subscript tool. It is also important to note that this Jacobian matrix is with respect to the fixed coordinate system. Why? Because the linear and angular velocities are written with respect to the fixed coordinate system. And that is the reason there is a leading superscript zero. Okay, so if I wanted to find the Jacobian matrix for some other link or in some other coordinate system, we have to go back and change quite a few things. Just to remind that the zero tool Jacobian J of theta is not a true Jacobian matrix. Why? Because it was not obtained as a direct differentiation of a vector valued function. Okay. So the, if you go back and see calculus, if you have a vector valued function, the first derivative of the vector valued function with respect to the independent parameters is the Jacobian matrix. However, in this case, it is not so. Okay, here the first and the last three rows represent linear and angular velocity. Okay. So the first three rows have units of length. The last three rows have no units. So the linear velocity is meters per second. Okay. So theta dots are radians per second. So the quantity inside the matrix is meters, first three rows. And the second thing is angular velocity is radians per second. We already have theta dots, which are radians per second. So the quantity inside the matrix is unitless. Okay, so likewise, similar to zero V tool, we will put the top and bottom halves of this Jacobian matrix separated by this dashed line, just to remind us that it is not a proper matrix. So, and many matrix operations on this Jacobian makes no sense because it is not strictly a matrix. So for example, finding the condition number of this matrix is meaningless. Okay, since it changes with the choice of the length units. So what is the condition number? It is the ratio of the absolute value of the largest to the smallest eigenvalue. Okay, so if we find the eigenvalues of this matrix, okay, the largest divided by the smallest, okay, so it would could have units of length. And depending on whether you are writing the linear velocity as meters per second or centimeters per second, the condition number, the eigenvalues will be different numerically, okay, and the condition number will be different. So it doesn't make any sense to do some matrix operations. Okay, so what can we do with this? Or why do we use this Jacobian matrix? So the best way to think of the Jacobian matrix is a map. So what does it do? It will take theta dots, which are the joint rates, to the linear and angular velocity of the end effector. Okay. The Jacobian matrix can be derived for any serial manipulator with rotary and prismatic joints. Okay. Why? Because in general, the Jacobian matrix is defined for any differential, differentiable vector valued function, x psi of theta 1 through theta n. And this Jacobian matrix is the partial of the first derivatives of psi with respect to theta i. So the ith column of this Jacobian matrix is d psi by d theta i. So in this case, it is not 
so straightforward, but you can think of it this way that the Jacobian matrix is the derivative of the position vector and then the Jacobian matrix, the bottom part comes from the angular velocity vector. Okay. So we can compute the linear and angular velocity using propagation equations and we can always rearrange in a matrix equation as was done for the planar 3R manipulator. So we can always obtain the Jacobian matrix for any serial robot with rotary and prismatic joints. This Jacobian matrix is very important in velocity kinematics of serial manipulators. We'll see that in a little while. Okay. The elements of the Jacobian matrix are nonlinear functions of the joint variables. Remember, it contains cos theta 1, cos theta 1 plus theta 2, and so on, sine theta 1, and so on. So the manipulator, if the manipulator is in motion, okay, so if theta 1, theta 2, and theta 3, the joint variables are changing with time, this Jacobian matrix will also change with time. At any instant, if the thetas are known, the Jacobian matrix relates the linear and angular velocity to the joint rates. Okay. And this relationship is linear. Okay. Because V is J times theta dot. So at any instant, if J is fixed, V and theta dot are linearly related. So the Jacobian matrix can be obtained for any link. Why? Because we can obtain the linear and angular velocity of any link. Most of the time, we'd be interested in the end effector, linear and angular velocity, and hence the Jacobian matrix of the end effector. The Jacobian matrix is always with respect to a coordinate system. Okay, why? Because the linear and angular velocities are written with respect to a coordinate system. So most of the time, the Jacobian matrix is with respect to the fixed coordinate system or the zero coordinate system. But the Jacobian matrix can be written in any coordinate system using rotation matrices. So if I want the linear velocity in some other coordinate system, we can pre-multiply by a rotation matrix. If I want the angular velocity in a, another coordinate system, we can pre-multiply by a rotation matrix and I again rearrange to obtain the Jacobian matrix. Most of the time, the Jacobian matrix is M by N, where M is the dimension of the motion space and N is the number of actuated joints. Okay, so in the case of planar 3R, there were three joints, theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. So there are three columns, okay, and it is moving in generally in that example, some of the components were zero, but in general, it could be moving in 3D space, so there are six rows. If the Jacobian matrix is square, and m, i.e. m is equal to n, and if the determinant of this determinant of zero to j theta is not equal to zero, then we can invert the relationship. So Initially, we have V tool is J into theta dot, but if it is M equals to N and determinant of the Jacobian is not zero, then we can write theta dot as J inverse V tool. Okay, so the above relationship gives joint velocities required for a le desired linear and angular velocity of the tool. So if I want the linear and angular velocity as let's say one meter per second and one radian per second, okay, along certain directions, I can use this expression to obtain the theta dots, which I need to give at the joints. So the direct velocity kinematics is basically this equation, which is the linear and angular velocity of the tool is j times theta dot. Inverse velocity kinematics, kinematics is basically theta dot is J inverse V tool. Okay, these are the two basic expressions in velocity kinematics. And we will take a look when M is not equal to N little later. So now let's take a look at what, what, are, what is the geometric interpretation of the manipulator Jacobian matrix. And this we will do through an example. So let us consider a planar 2R manipulator 
as shown in this figure. OK, so we have a rotary joint here, another rotary joint here. This link one, link two, and then this point X, Y, which is at the middle of the uh, so-called schematic parallel jog ripper. So we can write X and Y in terms of theta one and theta two. OK, so we have done this before. So X is nothing but L1, C1 plus L2, C1, 2. And Y is nothing but L1, S1 plus L2, S1, 2. So the linear velocity V of the end effector can be obtained by simply deriv taking the derivative of X and Y with respect to time. OK, so X dot and Y dot is the linear velocity of this end effector. And that we can see is clearly given by minus L1, S1 minus L1, L2, S1, 2 into theta 1 dot minus L2, S1, 2 into theta 2 dot. And the Y component contains C1 and C2. OK, just the straightforward differentiation of the X and Y position vector. And theta 1 dot and theta 2 dot are the joint rates. So in this example, the square bracket here con containing minus L1, S1, minus L2, S1, 2, minus L2, S1, 2, L1, C1, L2, C1, 2, and L2, C1, 2. So this 2 by 2 matrix is the Jacobian matrix in the zeroth coordinate system. So let's try to find the magnitude of this linear velocity vector, So which is given by dot product of this vector with itself. And we can write this dot product as something like g11 theta1 dot square plus 2g12 theta1 dot theta2 dot and g22 theta2 dot square. OK, so this g i j, there are two, i and j are both 1 comma 2, are the elements of this matrix j transpose j. OK, so for the planar 2R manipulator, the g i j's are very simple. It can be computed. So G11 is L1 square plus L2 square plus 2L1, L2, C2. And it, G12 is the same as G21 is L2 square plus L1, L2 into C2. And G22 is L2 square. OK, so it's a symmetric matrix. So the elements of Gij are functions of theta2. OK. However, G22 in this example is constant. Let's try to find the maximum and minimum of this velocity square subject to a constraint theta1 dot square plus theta2 dot square is equal to 1. OK, why do we need to put a constraint? If I don't put any constraint, then the velocity vector, which is x dot and y dot, is a function of theta1 dot and theta2 dot. And I can have an arbitrary velocity vector as I change theta 1 dot and theta 2 dot. So it basically fills up the two-dimensional space. The constraint theta 1 dot square plus theta 2 dot square basically is similar to a unit speed constraint in differential geometry of space curve. So basically it is we want to find the maximum or minimum subject to an L2 norm on the joint rates. How do we find that? We define a new function v star square, which is this g11 theta1 dot square, 2g12 theta1 dot theta2 dot, and so on. And we put in this constraint using a Lagrange multiplier. So minus lambda into theta1 dot, this should be square, theta2 dot square minus 1. OK. And what do we do? We solve the partial derivative square of d v square by d theta i dot equal to zero. OK, so if you take the partial derivatives, we can see that this reduces to an eigenvalue problem, which is g into theta dot minus lambda into theta dot equal to zero. OK, these lambdas are the same Lagrange multipliers we have introduced. And we can find OK, the eigenvalues of this eigenvalue problem, it can be found in closed form because g is 2 by 2. It's a quadratic uh, determinant of this would be a quadratic function in lambda. And we can solve for these lambdas. So the lambda 1 and 2 
are some function of gijs okay so for example it is half g11 plus g22 plus minus some square root of g11 plus g22 square minus 4 g11 g22 minus g12 square okay so it's just the roots of the quadratic polynomial which you will get from expanding the determinant of g minus lambda i equal to 0 okay g is real symmetric and positive definite why because g is j transpose j okay so it is real and symmetric it is also positive definite because it gives the square of the velocity okay so the eigen values are always real and positive if you assume that the two eigen values lambda 1 and lambda 2 are related by lambda 1 greater than lambda 2 then you can show that the maximum velocity magnitude is square root of lambda 1 and the minimum velocity magnitude is square root of lambda 2. Okay, so for square Jacobian matrix eigenvalues of j theta are square root of lambda 1 and lambda 2. This is well known from linear algebra. Okay, so the maximum and minimum velocity vector magnitude for the two art manipulators are square root of lambda 1 and square root of lambda 2. So if theta 1 dot square plus theta 2 dots were k square, not 1, then the maximum and minimum v are scaled by k. So from v equals j theta into theta dot, I could write j transpose v as g into theta dot. So for non-singular g, we can rewrite this expression as V transpose J G inverse J G inverse transpose V is theta dot transpose theta dot. Okay. So the right hand side is equal to one. The left hand side V is X dot Y dot. So X dot Y dot transpose into some matrix into X dot Y dot equal to zero. Okay. So this is of the form X transpose A X equal to zero. Okay, so with A symmetric positive definite, this X transpose AX describe an ellipse. So what is X here? This is X dot Y dot. And what is X dot Y dot? That is the velocity vector. So what we can say is that the tip of the linear velocity vector traces an ellipse and the semi-major and semi-minor axis of the ellipse are square root of lambda 1 and square root of lambda 2. Okay, so these are the minimum and maximum magnitudes of the velocity vector. So for theta dot transpose theta dot equal to k square, the size of the ellipse is scaled by k. Okay, so instead of 1, if this was k square, then we will get a larger ellipse. But the shape of the ellipse does not change. Okay, the minimum and maximum velocity magnitudes will change but the direction in which they happen the major and minor axis of the ellipse do not change okay so let's continue so the eigenvalues of g are only functions of theta 2 because remember g i j contains only theta 2 so what does this mean that the shape and size of the ellipse will change with theta 2 only okay and we can plot ellipses at all points in the workspace. So we pick a value of theta 1, theta 2, so which gives a point x, y, and I can plot the ellipse at that point. So for examples, here, for a particular value of theta 2 and theta 1, okay, it's important is theta 2, I can find this ellipse. It may look like this at this point. Okay, now let's go back and recall for this 2R manipulator, the workspace lies between two circles of radii L1 plus L2 and L1 minus L2. Okay. The maximum is L1 plus L2 and the minimum is L1 minus L2. The ellipse is independent of theta 1. Okay. So all ellipse at a chosen radii in the annular region are same. Okay, so if you think about it, it does not depend on theta 1. So if I am at some point and then I rotate theta 1, so basically I trace a circle in this annular region, 
the ellipses which I draw will look the same. The shape of the velocity ellipse indicates which directions are easier to move for a given joint rates. Okay, so is this true? Yes, because the magnitude of the velocity vector is larger along the major axis and smaller along the minor axis. So you can think of it that if I give you theta 1 dot and theta 2 dot, I can move easily, more easily along the major axis than along the minor axis. Okay, that's what is mentioned here. If the ellipse reduces to a circle, okay, we can move equally easily in all the directions. Okay, all points in the workspace where the ellipse is a circle are called isotropic. Okay, isotropic is word is used in many uh, areas. So it basically means it is same in all directions. So in this case, the magnitude of the velocity vector is same in all directions. And it was coined by Salisbury in 1982. So isotropic configuration, basically the eigenvalues of J theta or G are equal. Okay, so for planar 2R manipulator, eigenvalues are equal only if G11 is equal to G22 and G12 is zero. Okay, so we can go back and see the expression for the eigenvalues, which we derived for this case. Okay, it's a quadratic equation. So it's like B square minus 4AC. So that B squ square root of B square minus 4AC part should be equal to zero. So from the expression of GIJs and using this above condition, we can show that it leads to two expressions. One is L1 squared plus 2L1 L2 C2 equal to zero and L1 squared plus L1 L2 C2 equal to zero, okay? And this is only possible if you have L1 is equal to square root of 2 L2. So you can think of it. One is L1 squared plus 2 L1 L2 C2 is zero and the other one is L2 squared plus L1 L2 C2 equal to zero. Okay, so L1 square must be equal to twice of L2 square. Okay, so L1 is square root of twice L2. And C2 can be obtained as minus one by square root of two. Okay, so this is some angle. What is this angle? Theta two is 135 degrees. So a planar 2R manipulator can possess isotropic configuration only if the link lengths have a ratio of square root of two and theta two is 135 degrees. So since theta one can change between zero and two pi, so all the isotropic configurations lie in a circle, okay? Remember, it, if the link lengths are not related by this relationship, L1 is square root of 2L2, then we do not have any isotropic configuration. The degenerate form of the velocity ellipse is something called as a singular configuration, and we will look at singular configurations later. Let's continue. If you have spatial motion and two degrees of freedom, the velocity vector lies on a tangent plane to the surface. Okay, so two degrees of freedom motion, the end point lies on a surface in 3D space, and the velocity vector will be tangent to that surface at that point. And on that tangent, we again have a velocity ellipse. If it is spatial motion and three degrees of freedom, the velocity vector lies in 3D space, okay? And you can see that the velocity will have three components, x, y, z, and the tip of the velocity vector will describe an ellipsoid in 3D space, okay? The same ideas can be extended to angular velocity vector. So you can think of the angular velocity vector lying on a plane and we have an ellipse. In 3D space, it will be an ellipsoid. The extension to six by six manipulator Jacobian matrix, because in general for a six degree of freedom robot, we'll have a six by six Jacobian matrix. It is much more complicated since the Jacobian matrix is not dimensionally homogeneous matrix. Again, we have some part linear velocity with units of meters per second and some parts which are radians per second. 
Okay, if you want to analyze both of them together, we need to use this notions of screws and twists. Okay, it has been done by several theoretical kinematics researchers, for example, Hunt. So the velocity ellipse, which we get for planar 2R, will extend and be called something as a cylindroid and a two screw system. The velocity ellipsoid can be extended to a hyperboloid and a three screw system. So we are not going to discuss this, but those of you who are interested can look up this book by Hunt. And we can extend this notion of velocity ellipse ellipsoids to parallel manipulator using parallel manipulator Jacobian. Okay, so what is the geometric interpretation of the Jacobian? It tells you that there are certain directions where the tip of the velocity vector can be larger than in the perpendicular direction. It is easier to move along certain directions than in the perpendicular direction. And this is true for plane and in 3D space. Okay. So for square Jacobian, matrix can be inverted to obtain joint rates. What happens if the Jacobian is non-square? Okay, and this happens in redundant systems. The Jacobian matrix is non-square because the number of joint variables will be more than six. Okay, so it will have six into n. Suppose I have n joint variables, the number of rows are still six because they represent the linear and angular velocity of the end effector. But if I have seven joints, so it, the Jacobian matrix will be six by seven. Okay, it's non-square. The Jacobian matrix cannot be inverted to obtain joint rates given linear and angular velocity of the end effector, okay? Because we have more unknowns than variables. In such a case, we can do what is called as a pseudo inverse, okay, to resolve this redundancy. So the pseudo inverse of an M by N matrix where N is greater than M, okay, is given by this formula. And this J theta hash, denotes the pseudo inverse of J Jacobian matrix. It is given by J theta transpose and to J into J transpose whole inverse. Okay, so what you can see is if this is M by N, J transpose will be N by M. So this product together is M by M and, we, and it's a square matrix and we can find the inverse. Okay, so we can pre-multiply by the Jacobian matrix to make it consistent. Okay, so this is the formula of the pseudo inverse. So let's look at some of the properties of the pseudo inverse. The dimension of this J hash is N by M. It is also not square. The left inverse J into J hash is identity. You can prove this. However, J hash into J is not identity. That is, it is not a right inverse. Okay, so remember, Normal matrix, N by N matrix, square matrix, R or A inverse A is identity and A into A inverse is also identity. Both the left and right inverse exist and gives you identity matrix. In this case, it is not true. Okay. The general solution to this linear equation, which is the linear and angular velocity of the tool is J times theta dot. Okay, when j is non-square, can be written as theta dot into j hash v tool plus another term. Okay, this term is identity minus j theta hash into j theta into something called omega dot. So this quantity here lies in the null space of j theta. Okay, so this part is this simple pseudo inverse part and this is the null space term. So the pseudo inverse without the null space minimizes theta dot transpose theta dot. Okay, so we can show that if you give zero V tool is J into theta dot. So there are many theta dots which satisfies this linear and angular velocity which is given. If you minimize theta dot transpose theta dot, if you find the solution which minimizes theta dot transpose theta dot, then that quantity is this J hash, okay? 
so theta dot j hash v tool not this part only this first part is the minimum theta dot transpose theta dot from the infinitely many theta dots which are possible the null space term has been used to avoid obstacles joint limits and to maximize a manipulability index which is determinant of j into j transpose to the power 1 by 2 okay because this null space part exists people have thought of why not use it and they have used it to avoid obstacles joint limits so if there are ranges of joint limits and to man maximize something else so there is a book by nakamura and you can see this the disadvantage is that this is a numerical scheme okay this j hatch which you obtained can be obtained numerically and at at any instant of time okay so j hash can be obtained at any instant of time it is not a global or an analytical result and this theta dot which you are obtaining it is like resolution of redundancy remember we had looked at finding a solution to the redundant robot when we introduce another constraint in this case the constraint is we are minimizing theta dot transpose theta dot which in turn gives you this j hash so this resolution of redundancy is at the velocity level we are discussing everything at the level of velocity not at the position and orientation level okay so it is a resolution scheme for at the velocity level not at the position and orientation level in summary the propagation of linear and angular velocities can be obtained used to obtain linear and angular velocity of the end effector in terms of joint rates okay from this linear and angular velocity of the end effector we can obtain the jacobian matrix which relate the linear and angular velocity to the joint rates okay it must be noted that the manipulated jacobian matrix is not dimensionally homogeneous some part contains meters per second or meters and some part is related to radians per second or unitless i gave you an interpretation of this jacobian matrix which is that the jacobian matrix is related to this velocity ellipse and ellipsoid there are certain directions which are easy to move and certain directions which are harder to move okay and they are related to the eigen values of this jacob gij so j transpose j okay the geometric interpretation of of manipulator jacobian for linear and angular velocity can be done separately okay so we can look at the linear velocity angular velocity and again we have two kinds of ellipses if you want to look at it together then it is much more complicated and i have not discussed this but we get things called cylindroids for two degrees of freedom motion okay so when full rigid body motion is considered full means both position and orientation at the same time together the jacobian matrix leads to something called square cylindroid okay if you have a non square jacobian matrix then we have to use the pseudo inverse to obtain theta dot given the linear and angular velocity and this can be also thought of as resolution of redundancy at the velocity level because the pseudo inverse minimizes the square of the joint rates okay so with this we'll stop here in the next lecture we'll look at parallel manipulator jacobian matrix